In this video we're going to see how to run a stock take, which is something you might do every week or every month to make sure that your Bright Pearl system reflects the actual number of items that you have on the shelf. Okay, so a stock take is broken down into seven separate steps. First of all, we export the product list from Bright Pearl. Then we prepare and print this file from Excel. Give it to your warehouse team to count the inventory. You then make amendments to the Excel file, removing rows with no change and then you clear all allocations in Bright Pearl, save your Excel file as a CSV, import the file, and then reallocate any inventory. And I'll go through each of these steps one by one. So the first thing we need to do is get our product list out of Bright Pearl. So once you've got your product list open, you might want to filter it to just show one brand or perhaps one category. If you have multiple warehouses, it's essential to filter by warehouse so that the inventory level shown is the one just in that warehouse. If you use locations within the warehouse, then it's also important to filter by warehouse so that the location column appears on the spreadsheet. Once you've got the products you need, click Export. Choose to export all the remaining rows and choose Excel. Download and open your file. where we can see a product file with a load of columns. We only need one column to identify the product when we're re-importing, so let's keep the product ID column. You might choose to keep the SKU. Let's get rid of these columns. We'll need the name, size, color and so on for our warehouse team to identify the right product. We'll remove these unwanted columns. Keep the inventory columns, of course, in stock, allocated, on hand. We don't need to know the number on order. And then we'll clear out everything apart from the location. So here we've got a spreadsheet that's almost ready to work through. The quantity in stock will be the number on the shelf. But then there's also a number allocated. We're going to clear these before we re-import the file, but it's important to show them here so your warehouse team can see exactly what's going on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new column, maybe call it shelf or however many you actually count. Let's make these two grey so that the warehouse team don't get confused. And then what I'll do is I'll print this document out. Your warehouse team will then run around the warehouse recording the number that they actually count. You'll come back to your spreadsheet and enter this into the column called shelf or actual or whatever you want to call it. What I've then got is an extra column in the spreadsheet, which calculates to see if there's a difference between the in-stock quantity and the shelf quantity. You can see in this particular example, there's a difference on this particular product here, where the shelf records one more than Bright Pearl does. And then there's one here where the shelf records one less than Bright Pearl. And it's only the rows where there's a difference that you need to import. So what we'll do is reduce this file to just these rows that have a difference. Next, we need to prepare the file for import into Bright Pearl. It's a CSV with fixed column headers. So if I just paste these in here, you can see what they are. We've got product ID, SKU, quantity, location, and item cost price. You only need to import the location if you're actually using multi-concurrent location management. So let's take the product ID and SKU. Let's take the quantity, which is actually going to be the difference, one and minus one. We don't need the location and we only need the item cost price if we want to use one from this file but in most scenarios you'd use a cost price from your cost price list. Now before we finish working on this file I'm going to show you why the next step is so important and the next step is removing all allocations from Bright Pearl before importing. So let's take this product here on line 2. We've got one in stock, one allocated which leaves zero on hand. Now somebody's gone to the shelf and they've counted zero. So that means that there's minus one. Bright Pearl would like to remove one from the system. However, because there's one allocated, leaving zero on hand, we can't actually remove it down to zero. So what we need to do is release all of these allocations, which will effectively take these to zero, which puts the on hand levels back up again. And now that there's one in stock, I can remove it with the import. So that's why we unallocate before we import the file. OK, so let's finish off this file. Let's get rid of the rows we don't need and then save it as a CSV. 
So let's go into Bright Pull and release all allocations. This is done from the product menu, allocate slash deallocate, and then click the deallocate stock button. That quickly releases all allocations, which lets us import the file. And we import the file from products, update inventory by CSV. And here's the screen where we import our file. If we've got SKU and BrightPearl ID in the file, it doesn't matter which we match by. We can either choose to set the inventory level to the quantity given, or as in our case, we'll add or remove the quantities given in the file. Choose a warehouse, and then choose where the cost price comes from. And the cost price is used when adding inventory, because it has to have an asset value that appears on your accounting system. And in our case, we'll choose a price and the cost price is here. Now it's good practice to have a cost price for every single product, but if your cost price list does not have cost prices for everything, we need to tick allow zero cost prices and then type allow in the box before confirming. We then choose our file and update inventory. At the top of the screen we can see a report where we can see the number of records in the file is two, one has been increased and one has been decreased. At the bottom of the screen is more information. On the left hand side is the file we imported and on the right hand side are any rows that failed to import. And the file has also been emailed to you so you can just open that file to make the next import a lot quicker. The final piece of the puzzle is to go back to our sales list, prioritize these, select them all and reallocate. And you might have to do this across multiple pages. Select allocate and then allocate orders. Any available inventory has been allocated to the orders going from the top to the bottom. So that's the process of running a stock take. Exporting a product list, working with Excel, counting your inventory, making the amendments to the Excel file, clearing allocations, importing the file and then reallocating any inventory. And that takes us to the end of the video where we see how to run a stock take.